folks, Travis Fox here with FoxOptic.com. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to move around and kind of get the basics down of how to use uh, the Pulsar thermal devices. In the particular case here, I'm going to be showing you on uh, Pulsar's new Thermion 2 XP50, but going to be pretty applicable uh, regardless of whether it was a Helion or Thermion or even, to be quite honest with you, one of the non-thermal like the DigX or DigiSight devices. You're going to see a lot of very similar menu characteristics, uh, trail, trail and trail 2 also. So basically I'm just going to walk you through kind of what the, a very quick walkthrough of what the menu functions do and how to navigate inside there. And then this is going to be the first in a series of instructional videos of how to use all the different features inside your scope. So be aware those videos will be coming behind this, but I thought this would be a good place to start as we're just going to start with the simple uh, operation and functions of the scope. So, you know, over here on the side, we have an encoder wheel. And so basically this, this has a scroll and you know as you're rolling it, you can feel that there are some little detent uh, clicks, so to speak, so that you kind of know where you're at. And so like forward and backward on this are gonna equate to left and right, up and down in a lot of the menu functions. And then in the middle of here is a button that you can depress. That's in what we're gonna call, you know, you're gonna hear me referring to it as the encoder button. So be aware that all your buttons have short and long press functions. So if I'm saying a short press, then we're talking about just a basic, you know, one short press and release. If I'm talking about a long press, you're going to push and hold in on that until you get something to take place and then release. Uh, same way back here on the eyepiece, we've got, uh, actually I'll tip this down so you can see it a bit better, but we have a plus button. Normally that's going to be for your magnification zooming and uh, turning the PIP on and off. And then here we have a record button. That is going to be for start, stop, record, or taking uh, still image capture. And then long presses are going to switch between those two modes. And then you have your blue power button, which typically in normal operation mode is going to be obviously your power button. Um, or you're going to hold down on that until you get the three, two, one uh, countdown, at which point if you release prematurely going to throw you into a screen saving mode so you're not getting as much light out the back and or if you're in either the automatic or semi-automatic or, or even in manual nuke modes for that matter, very quick short press on that is going to cause the unit to calibrate. Uh, but we'll go into that, like I said, in a future video. I just want to go over where the buttons are so that if I'm telling you, know, you know, a magnification button press, that's going to be this button, record button press here, power button or blue button press. And then, of course, over here is where most of the, the menu items are going to be manipulated or either by rolling the encoder or pushing the button. So we're going to take this unit uh, outside so you got a little something to look at in the background. It records WYSIWYG, so you're going to be able to see what I'm doing in the menu function, and I'm going to try to talk you through uh, what to kind of look for, and I'll put some prompts on the screen so you can see that. So let's take it outside, uh, get a look at what we're doing here, and uh, hang with me, and I'll be right back. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do here is I'm just going to very quickly uh, go through the screen items that you're going to see. So as you can see there in the upper left, um, you see the REC and then the time as this is recording. Um, so basically I've done a short press on the record button to start that record. I'm in the video uh, camera mode. So that's what that's all about. And then down here on the, what we're going to call the status bar at the bottom uh, from left to to right you're going to essentially see an a over there this i don't have a yardage otherwise that would say a yardage in combination with that so that's indicating that i'm on a profile uh, if i had an aiming point associated with that it would tell me the yardage uh, the next little icon of the two trees is telling me that i'm in forest mode the next icon that says A is telling me that I'm in automatic calibration or nuke or non-uniformity correction mode. Uh, the next is obviously telling me that I'm at 2x magnification. Um, you can see that my microphone is shut off. The line over that indicates it's off. 
9.47 p.m. And then, now that little thing that just popped up there is going to tell me that in auto mode it just did a calibration. So if you've seen there was a little pause and it calibrated itself. So then back over to the clock, 9.47. That comes up and with a 3 two, one countdown to let you know it's about to calibrate. But sometimes you'll notice it and sometimes you won't. Now, typically I like to run semi-automatic mode so I don't have to worry about that. But irregardless, back over to the right, we're on uh, 9.47 is the time, obviously. And then we're showing that I'm currently operating on the number two battery, which is the removable battery. And it's telling me the status level. And the number one, you can see that's the internal battery. So if my number two goes dead, it's going to seamlessly switch to that number one, at which point I could switch it. But you can see that both batteries have their own level indication and that it, that it shows you which one you're oper operating on by highlighting that in blue. So we're going to do a short press on our encoder button. Again, that's in the button in the center of the encoder wheel. And a short press is going to bring up the right hand quick menu. So once that's up, you can see where it'll stay up for a period of time. And if you don't do something, it's going to drop right back out. So if that happens, just another short press will bring it up. And you can see there I'm in the stadiometric rangefinder is what's coming up. So I'm, if I do additional short presses while I have that menu up, it's going to toggle between those menu items. So short press, short press moved me to brightness, short press moved me to contrast, and you can see where that's indicated by the triangle over there on the right. It's moving the item that I'm on into the center and then it's turning it white in that middle. So like there in brightness, if I wanna make an adjust, I just roll the encoder wheel up or down. In the quick menu, you don't have to do any short presses to select anything. You just drop it wherever you want it to be. So I, there I set it at 12, I'm gonna let it go away. Now, those menus are sticky. So in the sense that if I do a short press, it's going to automatically come back up on brightness because that's where I left it off at last. And it's going to be at that 12. So there you can see that. So likewise, let's make an adjustment in this contrast. I'll reach the contrast up there to about 15. So again, I'm just letting it go. It went away. If I do a short press, you can see where I'm back on it, and it's at 15. Again, additional short presses just going to move me through there. You're going to really want to know how to adjust these contrast and brightness. If I was out here in a really dark scenario, which I am, but I'm, you know, for the video purpose, I'm going to leave them adjusted a little weird, but I would normally run that brightness down all the way down to about no zero to two if i was in white hot like this and then adjust my contrast um, accordingly you know to get the image where i want it to be so i'm going to go ahead and stop the recording here and i'll start it back up and show you uh, the main menu here in just a minute okay so i intentionally i'm, wa I'm kind of watching my time here um, i intentionally stopped that recording and you can see i started up a new one so now i'm going to show you how to navigate the main menu and how to understand a few things in there so to get to the main menu with nothing on your screen the way you are right now instead of doing a short press on the encoder button we're going to initiate with a long press so i'm just holding down on the encoder until i see that menu pop up and then you can see it popped up and now I'm rolling the wheel just to keep it active but you can see as I roll the encoder wheel it's going to come up wherever it was at last but you know essentially there's all the different uh, items but what I want you to see here is as the triangle moves from item to item in the menu you can see where not only does the white triangle move and that highlights but it at the top of the screen up there by where it says menu it's telling me the name of that actual menu item so you have the icon over there on the left but then at the top of that column you can always look and see what that's called so basically you know if I want to go into one of these and again I'm going to come back through these in another video in a lot more detail on the individual items and show you how this stuff works but if I wanted to come in here and change color palettes it's just as simple as roll to that you can see where it's actually called color modes in the menu it's telling me that we're on white hot so if I wanted to open that menu I'm going to click on it short press to open it 
and then I can roll through the menu options and see my different palettes that are available I have to do an additional short press to select something else otherwise if I don't do anything and I just let go of that button eventually it's going to time out and it's going to put me right back to white hot once that goes away or if I do a long press without selecting that so like right there timed out went back to white hot but that's okay if I want to get back into it again those menus are sticky it's going to remember where it was so I'm going to do a long press to open up and there I am on color mode so all I got to do is a short press to open it let's say that I for example I wanted to go in here to black hot now I'm going to do a short press to select black hot and you can see where it accepted that so now it's going to stay on there so Again, if I wanted to get that to go away, I can just do a long press to get it to cancel out quicker. Or, you know, obviously once I'm done manipulating, if I just don't do anything at all, eventually it will time out. So we're going to switch that back to white hot. I'm doing a long press to back clear out to the main menu. If I want to bring it back up, another long press, I'm right back here at color mode. So I'd like to give you again an example of that. Let's go here um, into reticle setup. We'll go into reticle type, and you can see how if I do the long press now to back mount one, but you can see also in there in the sub menu where the triangle is moving around, it's giving me the white to indicate along with the triangle, but it's telling me what each one of those sub menus are called at that top column. So that's reticle type, reticle color. Uh, reticle brightness so for example if I want to come in here and switch to a different reticle I could I could come in and let's say I want to select that reticle short press to select it and now you can see that I've selected a different reticle long press to back out of that menu if I want to speed things up a bit another long press will drop me all the way back out and now I've got that new menu so um, be aware long press to open that back up that they're obviously at the top there under where it says menu you can see the two little circles that indicates that there are two pages to this menu so there are more items but they both operate pretty much exactly the same way uh, this can be a handy one here this is your device information if you click on that it's going to tell you the firmware version you're on serial number you know some basic information for your scope so you know, if you ever need that, just be aware that's where that's at. Here is the general settings tab, you know, some, some changes in there, but hopefully that'll help you understand how you navigate that menu a little better. Uh, we're going to go back inside and I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about just some general operational things. We'll be right back with you. Okay, so just one more thing now that we're back inside that I would like to bring to your attention that I didn't uh, touch on before, but you know, obviously very important thing with your device is going to be focusing and knowing how to do that properly. So back here on the rear of the eyepiece, we have a diopter control and that's going to allow you to adjust that in or out, which is going to essentially increase or decrease magnification to the display screen inside the unit. So basically if you have, you know, if you wear corrective lenses or something part of the time and you're not wearing those because of fog up on your what have you, this is going to give you a way to correct for that using, using the actual eyepiece. This is what they call a fast focus. So if you do wear them sometimes and don't wear them other times, you know, obviously you can readjust that. But generally once you've focused this adjustment, Again, just for the numbers and things on the display screen to look clear, just to the screen itself, you're generally not going to refocus this. So your active focus is up here in the front. This is where you're going to make focal adjustments as distance to target varies. Uh, essentially, that's going to be performed by twisting or rotating that. And, you know, that's, I think it's pretty self-explanatory, but I just wanted to call that into your attention so you, you got a better understanding of that. Uh, be aware again we're going to go over some additional uh, one you know line by line features in there in more detail as these as this series progresses but i hope you found that informative uh, if i can help you out at all with any of these devices feel free to give me a call toll free 877 806 2977 be sure to check us out on the web we have all these devices for sale www.foxoptic.com thanks a lot and have a great day